Church, we have no enemies. We have no enemies. Those who are staunchly opposed to the gospel, hurling insults at us because of what we believe, trying to take away our rights, they're the ones we're called to serve. So what is it? What stirs up your judgment of other people? What makes you want to see someone punished for what they do? I think I'd like to point out one thing that I think has the biggest impact on why we judge in a way that we shouldn't. We simply forget that at one point we were also on trial and we were undeservedly found not guilty. Not guilty. When all the evidence was stacked against us, Jesus stood in the middle and declared us not guilty. So the question here today is, are you satisfied with God's judgment of you? He has declared you not guilty. Are you satisfied with that? Because when we develop a habit of working for our salvation, instead of receiving it as a gift, we start holding other people to that same standard. That's what we do. If, you, if we lose our focus of the gospel being a principle of mercy and grace and forgiveness, and we start trying to attain it through our works, through the little things that we do, trying to earn God's favor, trying to earn righteousness, trying to earn grace, we look at other people and say, what have you done to earn it? That's what we do. We hold other people to that same standard. Let's turn to John 9. The summary of this chapter is um, Jesus heals a blind man on the Sabbath and the Pharisees are upset that this is happening on the Sabbath and they're, they're also in disbelief that this man was actually blind. They end up ridiculing the healed man and then Jesus revisits the man after he gets thrown out of the temple. And this is where we pick up in verse 35. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have seen him now. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see, okay, and those who see will become blind. I'm like, wait, hold on, Jesus. (laughs) What's going on here? I'm cool with the first part, right? I won't, yes, make the blind see. But those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this, and they asked, what, are we blind too? So they kind of understood what he was getting at. Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. This is a conversation not about physical blindness, but about spiritual blindness and spiritual sight. For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. We know that the Pharisees were listening to this statement because they immediately responded. So it's safe to say that Jesus was speaking to them. They were the Jewish religious leaders of the day, and they were known for their self-righteousness and their high view of the law. They were, in fact, unrighteous in their judgments. They believed they could properly and accurately judge a man. And Jesus is saying, yeah, you think you can see clearly, you will become blind. And not only that, but you will be guilty of your sins. He says, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of your sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. Listen, church, withholding your unrighteous judgment of other people is not an option. What Jesus is saying here is that if you enact your own judgment on other people, then you are at odds with God's merciful judgment on you. Let me say that again. When you enact your judgment on other people, you are at odds with God's merciful judgment on you. He has mercilessly judged us 
We've been given favor and mercy beyond belief. And we have to ask that question of ourselves. Are we satisfied with God's judgment of us? You can't earn it. You can't work harder for it. You don't deserve it to begin with. Let's not try to work for our salvation because when we do that, we start holding other people to that same standard. So today and forever, church, let's rest in the gospel. Let's make a point to bless those who curse us. Let's make a point to bless those who we don't agree with. Let's make a point to bless those who are different than us. Amen.